Live from the studio at the Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies, this is Have a Bible Question, where you are part of the program. Now, let's go to the Bible for answers to your Bible questions. Um, I do have a question that came in, though, we we're trying to get to real quick. Okay. Uh, I think we got enough time. And the question is, I heard it said that God has always required a bloody sacrifice. Can you please explain why? Okay, so that comes from, I would go to the book of Leviticus. Ooh, I was going to go to Genesis. And the very first thing that you see in Leviticus is indeed a bloody sacrifice. But what comes after that, the first four chapters of Leviticus is about sacrifice. And when you get into some of the following sacrifices, they're not blood sacrifices. They're grain offerings and food offerings, and, and they're called heave offerings. But what so are those for? Those have specific reasons. For example, uh, to simply offer peace is one of those, a peace offering. Uh, there's also just showing your thankfulness. Uh, there's also trespass offerings. So most of the time, though, sin offering has always offered has been what for sin is blood is always blood for sin. Um, and so Leviticus, you did exactly right. Go back to there because of the law of Moses. That's what it required. Genesis, though, uh, I've heard it often used in Genesis chapter three, that what you have is the sin entering in and they were in the garden and uh, they made for themselves for seven aprons. And uh, they heard the voice of the Lord. They hid, verse 8, um, chapter 3, verse 9, where art thou? Verse 10, I hid, I was naked, I hid myself. <laughs> verse 11, I love this. Who told you you were naked? You know, and, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know that's, that's like my sister. And since we're telling stories tonight, uh, we weren't supposed to go down a certain road when she was driving us to school. And um, she always, but she'd take that way because it was faster. And then one day we passed down the road and there was this cow right there at the fence. And my mom said something about it. And my sister was like, that cow's always there every morning we drive by. <laughs> really? <laughs> I didn't think you were supposed to be going this way, Cassandra. You know, and so um, they see that she was the perfect one, supposedly. <laughs> but anyway, she was just better at getting away with it. Uh, <laughs> that don't stick with me at all, does it? All right. And so then um, uh, verse 12, man. The woman whom thou gave me uh, the tree uh, caused me to eat it, is what he's saying. But then you go down. Where is the verse? I can't find it. Guys. Verse oh, 21. 21. Th thank you there, Ray. <laughs> it says, unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. And so what they would say oftentimes is even the first sin ended up requiring blood to be shed for, their, for the covering of the clothing over them. I get torn about that explanation. I do think you see there at the very beginning, you see sin and there ended up having to be some type of animal sacrifice to cover over them. Is it symbolic? Is it foreshadowing prophetic in nature? Possibly. So yeah, Galatians three verse 27 that we put on Christ yeah. and that's salvation. The only way we can do that is through his blood. And the significance is the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so it kind of links the patriarchal, the mosaical, then the Christian dispensation. You got something to do right in the very next chapter. The fact that uh, Abel, uh, uh, Abel, sorry, uh, offered a more excellent sacrifice because he gave of his uh, the the cattle. You know, he gave he uh, he slayed an animal. You know, for his sacrifice, whereas Cain gave uh, of the fruit of the ground and it was not acceptable. Uh, but you know, we were talking about the idea of blood, and I think the significance of it goes to Hebrews chapter nine because they were talking about it in general. These things were offered looking forward to the blood of Jesus Christ right. being offered. And uh, that's what uh, Hebrews chapter 9 talks about that. When he's, can I, just two passages, uh, yeah. 9, 13 and 14. For at the blood of bulls and goats and ashes of heifer, sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And of course, 
he said, uh, with the Lord's Supper, I, you know, this is my blood that shed for the uh, remission of sins. And, uh, and, and this speaks to that as well. Go ahead. Now, why? Why is blood associated with that sacrifice? Because of Leviticus 11, yeah. or excuse me, 17, verse 11, which says, mm-hmm. life of the flesh is in the blood. Right. Mm-hmm. And so we know that, for example, the wages of sin is death, Romans 6, verse 23. Right. And the only way that we can have life again through passages you just read is through that life giving blood that was shed by Jesus. That's right. one of the things I love about scripture. It, it, it's simple, but the more you read it, you see the complexity of God's eternal design that everything fits. Right. I together. call those the threads of the Bible. Oh, yeah. There's several different threads that run through the entire Bible. And that's the scarlet one, right. uh, the blood thread. Yep. And the fact that it had to be the best that they had without spot, without blemish. And that was, more Indicative. of a sacrifice, yep. uh, you know, because I think when it Malachi said that they were offering their blind and all that, and that, that really wasn't sacrificial to them because no. they didn't want those anyway. Yeah, exactly. You're uh, giving off your second best. So they worst. offered the best. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Then I think we answered that question thoroughly. 